Okay, we are now streaming live on Facebook. Hello, everyone out there. Uh, all right, so welcome to the IT Cast, Real Talk on Sex. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Nika Shirell, and this episode is Mom Hacks, How to Maintain a Healthy Sex Life While Raising a Family. Our, um, our episode tonight is sponsored by the San Francisco AIDS Foundation. During shelter in place, the San Francisco AIDS Foundation is able to provide on-site clinical care for anyone with symptoms of sexually transmitted infections or who might have had exposure to HIV. SFAF is also hosting online social events and activities for our queer and trans family Monday through Friday. You can check out that schedule at facebook.com slash strut, S-T-U-R-T-S-F. Um, and you can learn more about how to receive their services at sfaf.org. Okay, so before we dive into tonight's topic, I want to take a moment to acknowledge all of the moms out there and share why I think this talk is so important. Growing up, I used to think that moms were the most sexually expressed and free people on the planet, especially because there was uh, walking, talking evidence of their sex life, like they had kids. <laughs> I later learned that having enough sex to get pregnant is not the same as having a healthy and enjoyable sex life. I chose to embark on this topic to give back to all the mothers out there and say thank you for your dedication and commitment. Mothers are a special kind of woman who are fierce, passionate, and kind. Thank you providing the love, light, and energy that it takes to raise a family and bring forth a future of new possibilities. I also want to thank my mother personally. Without you, none of, the, none of this would be possible. Without your wisdom, guidance, and support, I would not be the person I am today. Thank you for always telling me, you know you can ask me anything, and you know you can tell me anything. Your wisdom, openness, and kindness created a safe space for us to communicate and provided building blocks for the friendship that we have today. So our guest tonight is Bush Mama Africa. Bush Mama is a priestess, artist, workshop facilitator, and community healer. Um, and she's one of my most favorite people in the world. Uh, Bush Mama, please take a minute to tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so I'm an Oakland native, um, born and raised. I'm an artist. I'm a mom. Like you said, a priestess, a community healer. Um, I work a lot at healing clinics that happen here in the Bay Area. Um, I'm a workshop facilitator, so I'm teaching people how to have a healthy womb, how to have a good sex life, how to have um, spiritual connection to their ancestors. So that's like my, my role in the community is to teach those things and to personify those things. Um, <clears throat> but above all else, you know, I'm just a Black woman living in a Black woman's reality <laughs> and enjoying for the most part. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, we have some people joining us. This is so beautiful. Um, so I know, um, I know you said you're a mom, and I know that you're a mom. Like you're a mom of so many people, both your children and just the world. There's the space of healing that is so present around you and the way that you carry yourself. Um, so please, you know, let's start with like why this conversation is so important. Ooh, wow. So first of all, I want to say thank you to my mom, Rose Marie Goods, who was very candid about sex growing up. So I know everybody did not have that. So I have to pay homage to her. She was bluntly honest and raw and uncut about sexuality. She, we always knew that sex was part of her life, whether we saw it, heard it, knew of it, smelled it, something. We always knew that sex is part of my mom's life. I think I caught my parents having sex when I was like five years old. And I'm like, oh, that's what they're doing. Wow. So it's always been normalized. It was never shamed. It was always personified as part of her life. And that gave me legion to live my life in that same way. Now, what, what makes it so important is that most women who have been around me, not most, but a lot of women who have been around me are sexually repressed for one reason or the other. And I was like, wow, this is huge that there's so much shame, blame, guilt, sadness, oppression around sexuality. 
And uh, so I took it as a badge, like, this is something we got to talk about, we got to work on, we got to work through, because it's really hurting women to not have healthy sexual, to not have a healthy sexual life. Um, they're missing so much, they're missing out on so much that benefits them personally. Um, and I think when we think about sexuality, especially for moms, we're always, we are, our go-to is partnered sex. But sexuality to me is way more than partnered sex. Mm -hmm. Sexuality begins with the self. So I'll go more in, into that as we go into it, but that's why it's important to me. I love that. I love that. You know, it brings to mind, first off, you know, May is National Masturbation Month. And so, yep, sexuality in itself, you know, it starts with your own personhood and your own personal identity. So, yes. So please, you know, do, you know, expand a little bit right now about what that what that means and what that looks like for people. Okay. So to me, sexuality is internal first, right? Sexuality starts with how, what turns you on, what excites you, what your erogenous zones are, like what places to touch bring excitement, bring pleasure. Um, how do you view your body? How do you embrace and touch and feel and be excited about your own body. Um, the feeling of sexiness. What does sexiness mean for the individual? Like that can mean lots of things for different people. And so sexuality is, is the scents that you like to wear, the soaps that you like to use, the oils you like to anoint your body with, the lotions that you use, the clothes that you wear, how much of your body you show or don't show, what's sheer, what's not sheer, the underwear that's underneath that no one sees. Sexuality is for you first. And so there's this idea that women get dressed up because they're trying to attract the men. No, women get dressed up because they feel good about themselves. I love that. Let's see, um, you know, I love what you're saying. That's so spot on. It's like what I can hear is that it's about that internal experience. You know, like what I go through by myself when I'm, you know, when I'm getting dressed, when I'm alone. Like, does this make me feel sexy but more than does it make me look a certain way? Um, I take my weekly baths and I share, it's like, I have this special bath salt now that's got bergamot in it. And whenever I'm running that bath water, I'm like, Ooh. oh, heaven. And like, it just takes me to this place. So like, I can hear that internal dance and just respecting that conversation. I love it. Um, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, and also just sexuality is natural. Like, you know, I think all of us can probably attest to like masturbating very early in life. I've seen kids as, as early as two years old, you know, masturbating or, or noticing that these sexual organs work. They do things. They feel good. It feels good to touch them. Like I'm always catching a little boy playing with their penises or little girls humping on something. It's like, it's a natural innate response and a natural innate energy. And so as you're coming up into adolescence, um, you know, the sexuality gets, it, it increases, right? And then um, you start to incorporate that with how you feel about yourself. But all the things around sexuality in the early stages is all personal and private, right? You're developing your breasts or your, or your penis is growing or you're intoxicated by your own smell or, or the, the taste of the feel of your own body. Like this is all personal discovery that happens with a person before they start to share this with other human beings. It's amazing. It is. I, I turned my video off so that my connection would be a little more stable. Um, but I love, I love what you're saying. And one of the things this brings up is that during the early stages of childhood, there can be a lot of um, shame 
put on self-exploration, masturbation, those like baby steps of discovery because, you know, religion, families, you know, don't embarrass people by doing certain things. And I remember always, like my mom was like, you can talk to me about anything. If you got a question, ask it. And I was like, oh, I can't ask her that. But like, that's the space that she created and that's exactly what she meant. So when I hear you talking about these, these conversations for how we step through our adolescence and we develop it in these ways, having safety around that is really critical. It is, and it also signifies why people have so much repression around it. The repression usually starts early when someone is called masturbating or when someone is called having sexual self-discovery or they find two kids rummaging around in each other's hands. Like, this is the beginning of the repression. Shame and guilt gets implanted into the children early, and so they start to feel like anything that they think, feel, or desire sexually is wrong. And so it becomes hidden in private and it stays that way for some people throughout adulthood. Yeah, that's awesome. So let's talk some more about sexual repression. Um, and I, we're focusing on moms this conversation. So why is it that women with children start to become sexually repressed or live this sexually repressed lifestyle? Man, it's horrible. Um, what I've seen. So I'll just go through personal experience because I'm not sexually repressed anyway. But there was a period after having my first kid where I'm just so involved with being a mom. Like that's such a new reality and construct and paradigm for myself that I lost sight of my own self. I really was just focused on taking care of this tiny human being that I'm solely responsible, even though her father was there, but I felt solely responsible for this human being. I was not myself. I was not myself for a good three years. Um, I was just focused on caring uh, for this child. And so a lot of women, even married, happily married couples, once they have the baby, they change. Sometimes the men get jealous of the baby because they're breastfeeding. They feel like they're not getting the attention. So they create tension in the marriage or the relationship. Um, and then, you know, your body is different after you have a baby. Maybe you were really thin and, and snatched and now you're not after having the baby. And so you have these body images. You don't feel sexy anymore. You know, new moms especially, like you don't get to shit by yourself. You don't get to sleep by yourself. You don't get to shower as often as you did those luxurious baths are out the window like you just don't have the time you're tired you know you just don't feel sexy you don't you're not interested in sex you like i i have this baby because of sex and like this is a lot of work i don't don't even touch me like don't even think about me so these are natural things that happen to women sometimes once they have the kid and then all the dynamics that come into play within the relationship that starts the downward spiral of sexual repression. And then like some, for some healthy couples, they can talk through this and work through this and get to the other side of it. And then when you're a single mom, it's just you. So yeah. there's no one to work this, work this out with. And so then you just give up, you know, you just like, I can't get a man. I got this baby. I'm by myself. I'm working two jobs, trying to save him, trying to go to work, trying to pick the baby up from the babysitter, come home, feed the baby, doing it all over again. It's just, it becomes this cycle where you just sexual, the sexual part of yourself is like dormant. It's at the, it's at the back because you've got all this other stuff going on. Yes. Thank you. You know, I can really hear um, first off, and like, it's, it's obvious that this happens for new mothers, you know, like it's not obvious, but hearing you explain it, it's like, oh, well, like whether you're in a relationship or not, you're going to go through up to potentially years of not feeling, I would even say like maybe even levels of like body dysmorphia, you know, like your body's not what it used to be. It's not what it was. And just getting used to this new mode of experience, new communications and like ways to be with yourself and your sexuality is likely changed throughout this time. Um, and, and so like, not just, not just moms, but like all parents.